this is kind of where um, medical history and knowing anatomy really comes into into the picture. So, you know, there are certain situations where women have had a breast augmentation done, and you can actually still breastfeed or breast reduction where you can still breastfeed but it really depends on where the tissue is taken from when it comes to breast reduction how the incision is made with breast augmentation so you know people are surprised to hear that you can still breastfeed if you've had a breast if you've had you know breast augmentation surgery yes absolutely but it really depends on how the incision's made so if you have you know concerns about that, no matter what stage of life you're in right now, let your plastic surgeon know because they're usually able to address those. And now it's, I think, especially as more and more women are comfortable talking about breastfeeding and breastfeeding in public and bringing up those concerns openly, um, plastic surgeons and other surgical fields are becoming more and more conscious of it. Even certainly um, surgeons who operate for breast cancer are definitely conserving as much breast tissue as they can. So those are definitely something that I think about for some women that depending on how the incision was made, you may not be able to have as high of a supply. Now, when it comes to children, it actually depends on the anatomy of the child too. Um, it depends on how much tone they have. So one of the biggest um, uh, calorie burning exercises that children do initially is eating. And I talk about that a lot with parents. That they always ask, why do they go to sleep after, or why do they sleep while nursing? And it, it's actually pretty hard that tongue is doing a lot of work that jaw is doing a lot of work and that action burns a lot of calories even though they're taking it in so they do fall asleep they do get tired now think about that so you need to really have appropriate muscle jaw control to be able to move the take the milk in and move it to the back of the throat some babies may have a cleft lip or a cleft palate they may not be able to do that some babies are born with a little less tone. We call it hypotonia, which um, can happen sometimes. And they just may not have enough strength to really hold their head up or hold their body up and be able to have that vigorous swallow suck pattern. So those are things that, you know, again, a pediatrician is able to step in and take a look at. And it's not something, especially the hypotonia, that's going to be just grossly evident to you, you kind of have to do a full body exam. So there's many, many different reasons why. So first thing I want to set clear is it's not something about you being a good mom versus a bad mom. Trust me, as a pediatr pediatrician poster child, and this is before I was a lactation consultant, I had so much guilt about ever giving my baby formula. And I even knew that formula was okay for a baby. So it's okay, move out of that mindset about whether you're a good mom or you're a bad mom. This has nothing to do with that. There's a lot of things that can really affect breast milk and production. Stress, stress levels is one of them, right? So going back to work, different changes in environment, you know, going from the home and being with the baby all the time and being in a workplace, or maybe you're going through something else right now. Maybe you are actually moving homes or moving states or moving through different careers at the time. So it's a different change in environment. I think another thing to point out is there's not just a difference, you know, with what your mom is experiencing, but also the child. So some babies, you know, they might nurse till... 15 months, 18 months, 24 months, three years, four years of age. Great. Um, I think that's a really wonderful relationship to nurture and to continue if you can. Some babies on their own are ready to pull off close to 10 months, 11 months of age, maybe even sooner sometimes. Of course, you know, when it's that early, we can't really switch them over to um, a dairy type of milk, like a cow's milk or anything at that time. But it's really dependent on the child, too. And one really important thing I want to point out is it's also just variable between, you know, from mother pregnancy to pregnancy. I've had some women who were great producers, maybe in their first pregnancy and in their second pregnancy, not so much or vice versa. For one child, they didn't have great uh, a great experience and they had low supply. And then for the second child, you know, there was a big change. So it can vary from pregnancy to pregnancy, child to child, and even from left breast to right breast. I think many women are surprised to hear there's always, you know, a super breast that might pump more or feed more or have a greater capacity. <laughs> 